Hello everyone and welcome to the Families of Hope training. This training is designed to help you open up your home to be a light in your community, to be a positive influence and a blessing to everybody in your circle of influence. There are really four ingredients, family worship, family group, family outreach, and family hope. We'll spend the longest on family worship because this is the central ingredient for all of the training. If you look in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the last part of the chapter, you find how the early church had a number of ingredients that helped them in carrying the gospel to all the world. One of the things it says is that they met at the temple and from house to house. In our day and age, we do a lot of meeting at the temple, but we've kind of lost the house to house meeting. The idea behind Families of Hope is that we will reinstill that house-to-house -house meeting and activities. It also says later in the book of Acts that they went everywhere preaching the gospel. Now, in our day and age, most people just think of the preaching of the gospel as limited to church buildings or public auditoriums or the airwaves. But in the early church, they preached everywhere. They shared everywhere they went. And Families of Hope is designed to help you be, become more and more bold in letting your light shine for Jesus. Let's take a little time and look at family worship. A number of years ago, there was a massive study that was done in the Seventh-day Adventist Church called the Value Genesis Study. It became known as Value Genesis 1 when they did a follow-up study a number of years later. But the Value Genesis Study said, what factors help children grow up loving Jesus, and loving the church with all their heart for their lifetime. And they found 41 factors that would help kids grow up in that way. And they found that the single most important factor was interesting family worship. When I read that, we had a, two young boys in our home. And I went home and I told my wife, if we don't do anything else right, we're going to do this interesting family worship right. And we began to experiment and try to find ways that we could work with having an interesting family worship. When you have little boys, they're bouncing around and pushing and shoving each other, and it's hard to hold them still. But we would just try to guide them. My wife and I talked about when would be the best time to do this as a family. We picked a time that, that we thought they'd be the calmest. We'd try to seat them with us on the couch we might open up a Bible story book or a bedtime story or great stories for kids. Any of those great books that you can find in the Adventist Book Center that are character building and designed to reach children. We'd open up the Bible. And through the years, we started with about five or ten minutes. And it grew to be about 30 minutes each evening. And then on Friday evening, as the Sabbath was coming in, we'd spend about an hour. And as it grew, we always tried to have a variety of activities. Sometimes we would talk about, what are you thankful for today? I remember our oldest child, Jacob, would say, I'm thankful for the sun, the moon, and the stars. And the next night, I said, Jacob, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for the sun, the moon, and the stars. The third night, Jacob, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for the sun, the moon, the stars. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm getting tired of this. And after about 10 days of the sun, the moon, and the stars, I knew exactly what he's going to say when we ask him what he's thankful for. And then I said, Jacob, why are you thankful for the sun, the moon, and the stars? And he brightened up and he said, because when the sun shines down on me, it makes me warm and it makes me happy. And at night when I see the moon, I can see better and I'm not as afraid. And then when I see the stars twinkling, it just makes me laugh and happy. And I thought, Lord, help me to be more thankful for the sun, the moon and the stars. We learned to say things we're thankful for. Later when Jacob got older, for some reason, he picked as his favorite number, 19. I don't know why, but 19. And one time he said, for family worship tonight, I want each person to say 19 things they're thankful for. Wow. Then we had to start thinking, what 
are we thankful for? It's easy to say quick things like I'm thankful for life and health if we have it and our families, but 19 things, you start realizing things you need to be thankful for you wouldn't normally be thankful for. Another aspect of family worship is that we would have uh, some singing. And during those family worships, it almost became a training laboratory for our kids because they learned to sing. They would bring back to the house the songs that they had learned in the Sabbath school. And I remember as a family, we'd sing songs like, Animals, animals, Jesus made the animals. Great big animals, little tiny animals. Animals, animals, Jesus made the animals. Here is an animal that I know. And then we'd all go, elephant. And then they'd want to sing the next verse. The same song, tiger or lion or bear. We go through 50 verses of this until we we're about worn out, but they loved it. So we'd have singing as a part of family worship. And we would have reading character building stories, as I mentioned, mission story books. We wanted to put in their heart that God had called them to be missionaries wherever they were. You know, every kid grows up to be either a missionary or a mission field. And so it's important that they begin to realize that there is a world to take the message of Jesus and his love and his soon return to the, to the people of the world. And one of the things that helped us make family worship more interesting was to put our children in charge of a week of family worship. When they turned three or four, we would tell them, this next week is your week. So when we had our three kids, ultimately, Danessa, our daughter, would have a week of family worship she was in charge of. And then Dustin would have a, the next week and Jacob would have the next week. My wife would have the fourth week and I'd have the fifth week. And then it'd go back to Danessa. And they loved family worship when they were in charge. They would come up with all kinds of activities. And we just insisted that they have something from the Bible and prayer to God and then whatever else they wanted to do for their family worship. I remember one of the first worships that Danessa had. She was just a three-year-old girl and she came to worship and we gathered there in the living room and she handed each person a sheet of paper and a pencil. And she said, I want each person to draw a picture of Jesus because tonight we're going to do a craft. And I thought, you know, we've never done a craft before, but that's good that she's in charge because she's thinking creatively on how to share Jesus. So I thought, what should I draw? I've never been much of an artist. And I began drawing kind of a stick figure of Jesus on the clouds surrounded by thousands of stick figures of angels for the second coming. And Danessa's drawing her better picture than me, even though she's only three. And she looks there and she says, Daddy, I think you can do better than that. And I said, Danessa, I'm not a very good artist. Maybe you can help me. Well, as the kids got older, they thought of trying some new things. They wanted to try to pick out some of the songs on the piano. And our son wanted to tap on the furniture. And later he wanted to bring a djembe drum and tap on that during the songs. And, and Dustin picked up the guitar when he was 13 and, and just kind of learned during worship how to sing the songs that we were having for family worship. When it came his time in Academy, he loved music so much he knew that there was 30 minutes of family worship that he was in charge of during his week. And he knew he's required to have a Bible, something from the Bible and to have prayer. So it would go like this. 28 minutes of singing songs with him playing the guitar and then a Bible verse and prayer and then he is done. And so this was just a way that he was learning to become a spiritual leader. One time when Jacob was in the um, oh, seventh or eighth grade, he said tonight for family worship, we're going to um, play Bible freeze tag. And I thought, Bible freeze tag? Is that worship? I said, so how does that go? And he said, well, it goes like this. I'm it, and when I tag you, you are frozen until you can say a Bible verse from memory. And so our house, you could kind of run around in circles and chase around. And so he said, I'm it, one, two, three, go. And he tagged us. And it didn't take long before we got through... Um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or for God so loved the world, or Jesus wept. Then we had to start thinking, what other memory verses? And that game of Bible freeze tag challenged all of us to start memorizing scripture more. 
You know, David said in Psalm 119, 100 and, or verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So memorizing scripture is a barrier against temptation. And that game of Bible freeze tag reinforced that in all of our thinking so that we began to learn more scripture from memory as each one during their week of worship would challenge us to do that. One time when, um, when I was getting, um, when, one day when I was very tired and I came home and I was just feeling like I just want to go to sleep, I um, was thinking, oh, it just, I'd like to fall into bed. And Anessa came up, she said, Daddy, it's my night for family worship and I'm looking forward to it. And it just gave me a new enthusiasm and a new energy to gather with the family. And these kinds of things bond us to God and to each other in ways that are incredible. And the family worship became the training laboratory for spiritual leadership. When our boys went away to college, they would come back and they would ask um, during spring break or during the um, Christmas break, they'd ask for their week of family worship when they're back home. So we knew they were getting it. We knew that they were learning. And all have become spiritual leaders. At this stage, our youngest is now a senior in academy and our middle one is just about to graduate from college and our oldest one is a Bible teacher and athletic director at one of our academies. And they all look back to some of their best memories as a family in family worship. There was a time when one of them was in, in their early teens and kind of those troubling teens. You know, we don't have a perfect family. Um, we prayed for perfect children, but they turned out normal. And it meant that sometimes they just were headstrong and sometimes their parents were making mistakes too. But I remember one night when one was in their early teens and it was time for worship and they didn't come and we went and called them and said, it's time for worship. I don't want to come to worship. And we said, well, it's expected as long as you're living under this roof, it's expected that you'll be at family worship. You can't shove religion down my throat. Well, we'd never seen or heard anything quite like that before. And I breathed one of those quick prayers to God and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I think he gave me this simple idea. And I said, well, you don't have to sit in the living room with the family but you're not going to be permitted to sit in your room doing your own thing. You can come and sit on the carpet in the hallway behind so you don't have to see anybody, and, but you need to be present and not doing other activities. And that seemed to give that child enough space at that time so that that was resolved. In some families, you might be saying, you know, oh, I wish I would have heard these things 20, 30, 40 years ago. It would have made my family different. But no matter what age you are, you can begin family worship. And if you have to, do it alone at first. Just get consistent with having family worship by yourself and with God. And keep inviting. If you live alone, you can invite some other believers over to your place or go over to their place. But in some way, just stopping and worshiping. You know, Abraham, it says, built an altar wherever he went. Noah, when he came off the ark, the first thing he did was build an altar. And those altars were symbols of the sacrifice of Jesus and looking to him for salvation. In the same way, when we gather as a family, whether it's one or two or four or five or with friends, 50, whatever, when we gather, we're remembering that we have a Savior who died for our sins, who is interceding for us right now because he rose again and who's coming again for us. And so family worship is the central ingredient of having a family of hope. If you're wondering how to just start with the simplest family worship, you might just go to the website familieshope.org and there you can download a bookmark each month that has a series of Bible verses to read on a particular theme. The theme might be family or discipleship ministry, stewardship, faith, and you can download whichever one you want and you can just read a short passage with your family and discuss it together. You can use this for your personal devotions as well. Some people actually take these and give them to friends at work and their friends will get together over a lunch one time a, a week and discuss some of the things that they're reading. This is a very simple tool to get you and your family into the Word of God.